So today I'm going to continue on the free code camps learn accessibility by building a quiz and we're on step 11 now. So we just want to change the h1 font color. So that will be color to this hex code. And then we want to set the font size uh, like so font size uh, size to min five view width and then 1.2 m there. So there we go. That's looking a lot better. So step 12, to enable the navigation on the page, add an unordered list with the following three items. The list item should be wrapped in anchor tags. So um, we want three, well, firstly, an unordered list. So we want UL. Um, we don't have Emmet, which is uh, something you can use on sort of IDEs, so like Visual Studio Code, if you've heard of it or something else. But um, I'm going to, yeah, write them all out individually. So there'll be a UL wrapping all of these to basically indicate an unordered list. And then we want um, an anchor tag um, and then close the anchor tag. And then within the anchor tag, we want our LI, so list item like so. And then what I'm going to do is just copy this one um, sort of just down three times like so. And then this one is info. The second one is HTML and the third is CSS. And what have I done wrong? OK, no, that's fine. It's just formatting um, or lack of. Um, there we go. That should be OK. Let me just check that three li elements inside the uh, oh sorry i think i've sort of done that wrong in that the text um should be the anchor tag let me just check that's correct yeah so let me select all of these um so i'm going to create the opening anchor tag and then just at the end of each of these, create the closing one as well. Like that. Let's see if that passes. That still doesn't pass. You should give the first text info. Uh, so I wonder if it's just the formatting on the page. So what I'm going to do is actually just put them, kind of bunch them up a bit, like so. So it's a, not the best way to uh, do this. There we go. Oops. There's a, there might be a, even a sort of actually a better way to format the text here. But yeah, I'm not sure um, at the moment. So I wonder if there is a, a quicker way to do this. No, I don't think so. Uh, but that's fine. Just get rid of any of this white space um, just in case it's causing any issues. Let's see. Oops. Um, this is where it will say actually it might have been right the first time. I'm not sure why that is jumping out like that. There we go. Let's check that code. Okay, so yeah, it was just white spaces um, within there. That's how the end structure should look like. So we've got our UL, then we've got three LIs. Um, sorry, let me line these up. Um, and then with each of within each of these LIs, there is an anchor tag, and that's where the text is. Um, so let's submit and go to the next challenge. So step 13, target the unordered list. So that was UL uh, oh, within the nav elements, um, but that's fine. We can use the UL and use display flex. And then to evenly space, that would be justify content space evenly. And let's test that. Okay, so now they do want us to use the um, nav and then with inside the nav the ul selector there we go 
So uh, step 14, as this is a quiz, you'll need, to, you'll need a form for users to submit answers. You can semantically separate the content within the form using section elements. So within the main element, <clears throat> create a form with three nested section elements. Uh, sorry, still can't speak, <laughs> but let's do that. Make the form submit to this one using the correct method. So create a form and like that. And then within there are three sections, I'm guessing. So I'm going to drop that down to the end. And I can't remember the exact syntax for submitting a form. Um, so I'm actually just going to paste that in for now as a str string. <clears throat> so and maybe it's two. Let me just check that. No. Um, is it submit? Ah, sorry, it says it there, it's action. So the form action is the uh, link that you're sending it to. <clears throat> um, oh, and there we go. We also need a method um, of post because we are posting the information within the form to this link. Um, so actually there, free code camp kind of helped us out. And we didn't have to Google that one, but yeah, normally with forms, um, I would yeah certainly give sort of have a Google of um, how to sort of work with them. There's many different ways, um, and particularly as well with frameworks, there's there's actually sort of form libraries that you can use, and they're all a little, little bit different. Um, but yeah, so sometimes I forget the sort of the raw HTML way um, of doing that. But anyway, step 15 to increase the page accessibility, the role attribute can be used. Uh, to indicate the purpose behind an element on the page um, to assistive technologies. The role attribute is part of the Web Accessibility Initiative, initiative sorry, WAI, or Y, um, and accepts preset values. Give each section um, elements the region role. So I'm going to select all of these sections, uh, oops, like so. And I'm going to give it a role equal to region, like that. There we go. So step 16, every region role requires a visible label, which should be re referenced by the aria labeled by attribute. To the section elements, give the following aria labeled by attributes. Um, so let me just grab each of these. Not so. And then I'm just going to do the first one, dash info. Uh, this one is HTML dash questions. And the third is CSS questions, like so. And then within each section, so I'm going to target that meeting point between all of them. Um, we want to nest a h2 element, h2, and that needs to have an ID with the corresponding aria labeled by attribute. Um, so that again is sort of student dash info for the first one. I'm going to copy that because we already have it and copy that one. And I think for the inside of the H2s, I'm just going to add a student info, um, HTML questions, and CSS questions. Like that. And let's see if that passes. There we go. That all passes. So submit. <clears throat> and step 17, typeface plays an important role in the accessibility of a page. Some fonts are easier to read than others, and this is especially true on low resolution screens. Change the font on both the H1 and H2 elements to Vedana. So H1, H2, and we'll do font dash family for that. And that would be Verdana. And let's see, I don't know if you noticed, but that just changed the font over there. And then we want to add a border dash bottom um, uh, and actually this is just for the h2 elements so h2 border dash bottom um, 4px solid and I can write out this hex code df d 
df e2, like so. Let's check that. Uh, it doesn't pass. Oh, yeah. So the second value of the font family should actually be um, sort of the fallback font. Um, I th don't think it needs to be string, so it'd be sans dash serif. Um, but in this one, they would choose Tahoma. So let's try that. Like so. There we go. So that's kind of the yeah the fallback font if um, Vedana is not available. So step 18, to be able to navigate within the page, give each anchor element a href um, with so, yeah corresponding to the ID of the h2 elements. So href equals, and if you remember the, um, where is it? The h2 student info, HTML questions and CSS questions. So HTML questions. Let's get rid of that and copy this one. That will be CSS questions for the last one. Like so. So. Ah, oh, sorry. So this needs to be the actual ID um, because when they click on here, um, rather than going off to a different page, it's going to go to that section um, within the code. Um, so there we go. That should now pass. Perfect. And step 19, filling out the content of the quiz below. Student info, add three div elements with a class of info. So um, div, slash div, and these have a class equal to info. And within each div, nest a label element and label and one input, like so. And I think input self closing. And then what I'm going to do is just copy and paste down the, those three. So those are our three inputs. There we go. Cool, and finally for this video, step 20, it's important to link each input to the corresponding label element. This provides assistive technology users with a visual reference to the input. Um, this is done by giving the label a for attribute, um, which contains the ID of the input. So this section will take a student's name, email address and date of birth, give the label elements appropriate for attributes as well as text content, then link the elements uh, input elements to the corresponding label so the label needs um, four and the inputs need um, or just IDs here so we'll do four um, and we've got name email and date of birth I'm going to put DOB for that and the three inputs are going to have IDs um, like that and again, I'll give that name, this would be oops, <clears throat> email and date of birth, like so. And then the actual text content. So what I'm going to do is actually make that not self-closing. Um, so create a self, well, create the closing input element. And then within there, we'll do, uh, was it name? And then this will be email and this will be date of birth. Let's just check that code. Okay, that doesn't pass. You should give the first label element an appropriate text content. Ah, sorry, yeah, it's actually meant to be on the label. So let me get rid of that. Email and date of birth. Let's check that. There we go. <clears throat> cool. Well, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.